I remember remarking to my colleagues, I said, we're just about to be captured. They put their guns to our heads and they started yelling at us and asking who we were and what we were doing there. The Reagan administration was not only violating international law, they were also violating the law that was passed in the U.S. Congress. I think that one of the jobs of a journalist is to discover the truth. The photo that I took went all around the world. It became known as the Iran-Contra scandal. The United States was involved illegally in supplying and supporting the Contra rebels. The way I see it, my photo probably saved thousands of lives. I'm Lou Demetes, I'm a photographer, and I was in Nicaragua covering the Contra war. When I went to the university, the Vietnam War was raging. I was very interested in what was happening around the world. What I decided to study, it was political science, and one of my dorm mates was a guy by the name of Carlos Somoza. Carlos was the nephew of Anastasio Somoza, who was the president of Nicaragua, and had recently run for re-election. But the opposition claimed that uh, there was voter fraud and that they had won the election. I was talking to Carlos and he said, my family has ruled Nicaragua for 45 years. The Nicaraguan people love my family. Of course, they always vote for us. There was no fraud. We always win the elections. And when I heard that, I said, wow, any family that's been ruling a country for 45 years, that's not a democracy, that's a dictatorship. The Somoza family was a Nicaraguan family that ruled the country with the support of the United States from about 1930 until the Nicaraguan Sandinista insurrection in 1979. The word Sandinista is a shortening of the Frente Sandinista de Liberación Nacional, which is the Sandinista National Liberation Front. They were a group of revolutionaries who successfully overthrew the Somoza dictatorship in 1979. And they were doing great things. There was a land reform, education and the health sphere, trying to make it better for the population. Shortly after, there was a change in the U.S. presidential office. When Ronald Reagan took office in 1981, his stated aim was to get rid of the Sandinistas. I want to tell you a few things tonight about the real nature of the Sandinista regime in Nicaragua. Shortly after taking power, the Sandinistas, in partnership with Cuba and the Soviet Union, began supporting aggression and terrorism against El Salvador, Honduras, Costa Rica, and Guatemala and it's become the stage for a bold attempt by the Soviet Union, Cuba, and Nicaragua to install communism by force throughout the hemisphere. The Sandinistas were socialists, they were not communists. Reagan decided to just put them in the same bag as the communists in the Soviet Union, for example. Nicaragua had been controlled economically by the United States really since at least the 1920s. And the United States did not want to give up that economic control. If the Soviet Union can aid and abet subversion in our hemisphere, then the United States has a legal right and a moral duty to help resist it. So from that time forward, the United States started providing military aid, financial aid to a group that wanted to overthrow the revolutionary government. Thousands who fought with the Sandinistas have taken up arms against them and are now called the Contras. I was not at all convinced of what he was saying about the country, but I felt as a journalist, I wanted to go down and see for myself what was happening. I first went to Nicaragua in 1985. I went down for the inauguration of Daniel Ortega as president. I had never been to Central America before. And on the way in from the airport, on the main road to the capital, there were donkey carts and there were people just walking. In my mind, hearing Reagan saying that this country and these people were a actual physical threat to the United States, I just saw how ridiculous that was. Shortly after I got there in 1985, Reagan put a trade embargo on Nicaragua. I photographed often, trying to show how the people were affected. And the war was really starting to affect everybody, especially after the United States really kind of put more effort into supporting the Contra rebels 
which was a group that was based on the National Guard of the dictator Somoza. And it was just causing a lot of death and destruction in the countryside. I started going out into the countryside, into the war zone. And I can remember on one of my first trips out thinking, well, now this would be really ironic if I happened to get ambushed by Contra rebels paid by the United States, armed by the United States. And if they killed me, effectively, I would be, in a sense, being killed by my own government. As a photographer, we were very exposed to what was happening. We felt safe with the Sandinistas, but the Contra rebels, we really feared them because they did not like journalists. I was on a story and I remember remarking to my colleagues, I said, uh, we're just about to be captured. They came in, they made us lie down on the ground, our face to the ground. They put their guns to our heads and they started yelling at us and asking who we were and what we were doing there. We could have easily been killed. There was a feeling in the U.S. Congress the Contras were not good people. The Contras will never have widespread popular support inside Nicaragua. If we continue to fund them, we will do no more than perpetuate the campaign of terror that has always been the trademark of the dreaded National Guard. They were also accused of human rights violations. They killed a lot of civilians. There was a big pushback that the United States should not be supporting these people. And so there was a move in the U.S. Congress to cut off funding by the U.S. government for the Contras. At a certain point in 1986, the U.S. Congress prohibited the Reagan administration from supplying the Contra rebels. Who are the Contras? Last week, Congressman McHugh and myself released a report that pointed out that 13, or 12 out of the 13 commanders of the Contra High Command are former officers in Somoza's National Guard. These are the people who would receive, distribute, and benefit from military aid requested by the President of the United States from this Congress. We must turn down that request. So now, supporting the Contras, the Reagan administration was not only violating international law, they were also violating the law that was passed in the U.S. Congress. They claimed they stopped. The Reagan administration said, oh, well, okay, that's fine. We're not, uh, we're not gonna supply them anymore. But as a matter of fact, they didn't. They never stopped, and the Nicaraguan government was complaining. They're still sending arms, they're still resupplying the Contra. And the United States said, no, no, they don't know what they're talking about, we're not doing that. But there wasn't any proof until a Contra supply plane that had taken off from an airfield in El Salvador was shot down over the jungle in southern Nicaragua. There was a pilot, co-pilot, navigator, and then there was the cargo handler. When they got to an area where they let the Contra know they were gonna drop the supplies, they'd open the gate and they'd throw them out and then the parachute would take them down. This plane was going to the rendezvous point and it was hit by a shoulder fired surface to air missile. It was gonna crash. And so the cargo handler, he already had the cargo door open because he was gonna start pushing these pallets out. He had a parachute. He wasn't supposed to have a parachute because this was a covert operation run by the Central Intelligence Agency. If there was a mess up, they didn't want anybody alive to talk about it. And so the cargo handler parachuted to safety, didn't know where he was, he was in the middle of jungle. So I get this call and they go, yeah, they shot down this, this plane. There's an American out there. We got to get pictures of this guy. There was only one helicopter that was going to be flying to the location. And I made sure that I was on that helicopter. So when we went in the next day, we went in. We were a triple canopy forest. It was the jungle. And we went in at tree level. So we were very low because if you're up high, that gives a good way that you might get hit by a missile. But if you're flying low, they hardly see you. So it was very dangerous. So I remember flying in, I, I looked down to the left to the river, and there's like all these short guys in uniform and this tall foreigner. And I thought, oh, geez, that must be the guy. Then over on the left, I saw the fuselage of the plane that had been shot down. The helicopter came down and we got out. Like all public relations people, they want to control things. They wanted to have a press conference. So they said, everybody here, come here, we're gonna have a press conference. But I had seen like the fuselage of the plane 
They didn't want me to go to the, to the plane, but I just went to the plane. And so as I was going to the plane, I wasn't thinking like supply plane. I remember seeing like all these boots, like all these army boots. And I was thinking, God, what are, what are army boots doing out here? Well, it's because everything had been exploded and so all this stuff was all over the place. So I went to the fuselage. There were some Sandinistas there. They were pulling rifles out of the fuselage. I photographed them and there was a guy standing on the tail section and then I ran back. And as soon as I get there, I see down the hill where the river was, I see this, these guys bringing this really tall guy up the hill. I had the telephoto lens. When we first saw him coming up, he looked really worried because he was worried they were just gonna kill him. And when he saw the journalists, you could just see him relax because he was thinking, well, I think I'm gonna make it out of here because I mean, they're all here and they're not gonna shoot me. They brought him in front of us. He was an American, and uh, John Sisolov from um, CBS, they told John, okay, you can ask him two questions. And so John goes, what's your name and where are you from? And he goes, my name's Eugene Hassenfuss and I'm from Marionette, Wisconsin. And how did you get here? And this was Hassenfuss's moment. He looked up to the sky and he said, I got shot out of the sky. There were eight photographers there, and there was only two of us who got what turned out to be the photo that was the most telling image. In fact, the guy that was leading him was the soldier that had shot the, the missile to shoot the plane down. And that photo ran all around the world. It ran everywhere. And in fact, the head of Reuters photos in Washington asked me why I was the only one to have the photograph. And I said, well, I, I don't know why, but I know that I got it. And if other photographers didn't get it, then that's unbeknownst to me at that point. And so the plane went down. There's photos of Hassenfuss. The Sandinista said, well, look, here's the guy. He's an American. Yeah, this proves our point. But, the, but Reagan, in fact, he even said it himself. They claimed they had nothing to do with it. And so they totally cut this guy loose. They denied it, but there was all this documentation on the plane. They had all the documentation of like the flight plan. One of the documents was that Air America. Air America was a, a company that was started and funded and owned by the Central Intelligence Agency. So they had all this incriminating stuff. They let us photograph it and they let journalists look at it. The Miami Herald, they ended up winning a Pulitzer Prize for reporting the story about Hassenfuss and linking it to what became known as the Iran-Contra scandal. The photo that I took went all around the world. The other reporting, other photographs, we were able to show that contrary to what the Reagan administration had been saying is that the United States was involved illegally in supplying and supporting the Contra rebels. I think up until that time, it was, there was a very real possibility that the United States was gonna invade Nicaragua. Reagan administration after that no longer had the support of the U.S. public and then ended up, they were all tied up in these hearings that started in the U.S. Congress. You wrote false and misleading letters to the Congress of the United States. The government lied to the American people about the connection to the Hassenfuss plane. I think it's an example of what photography and what reporting can do. And I think that that is one of the jobs that journalists have. And I'm very proud that I played a part in that.